get a £5 free bet every week with Offer Club from William Hill. Simply stake a total of £20 or more across the week on pre-match football accumulators with four or more selections and you'll get a £5 free bet on the Friday. Join William Hill Offer Club on mobile or online now. Everyone ready? No latecomers? Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you for being here for today's head-to-head -head press conference. Um, where Sam Kynick, on behalf of MGM Scotland, presents World Championship Boxing at the Lagoon Centre uh, in, in Paisley here in Bonnie, Scotland, this Saturday, the 3rd of December. We have Ended up with what a fantastic bill uh, this Saturday. Uh, what was already a, a you know a, a good trade show uh, that Sam had put together, um, you know, featuring some great talents, Stephen Lewis, Stephen Orland, and a few of the guys that are here, uh, who Sam will talk about shortly here today on the top table, um, has been elevated to a world championship night of boxing, um, plus plus two other you know rising stars of of the world scene. Um, it's a treat for the, for the local fans, it's something that probably wasn't expected uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, so here to talk about, you know, sorry, here to talk about Saturday's card is uh, Sam Kynick and as I said, uh, you know, four of the guys that are on here, here on Saturday. But I'm very, very proud to say that we're here with Billy Joe Saunders who will be defending his WBA, WBO Middleweight World Championship against Arta Akabov. Also on the card, we've got Jack Cattrall, um, who will be fighting for the WBO Intercontinental Super Lightweight Championship. Uh, and also Paul Butler, who is you know, one or two fights away from challenging for the world title. So um, you know, these are pivotal fights, and you know, all the three of the uh, fighters that were are represented by Queen Good Promotions that are fighting this Saturday. Um, but also, obviously, for the guys who, uh, you know, who are already on the card that Sam's put together, and he's going to say a few words about those guys now. Thank you, Francis. Just to reiterate what Francis has said, this is a, a great card, I believe, from the best in Scotland in several years, certainly in my recent memory, looking through the bill. It's um, star studded, obviously, headline now by Billy Joe, which is a, a great addition to the card. And just to run through some of the undercard boxers and introduce some of the Scottish boxers we get in the state platform on Box Nation. First up, we've got Paul Keane from Dundee, having just his second professional contest against William Warburton. Francis remarked, to me earlier, are you sure about that one? And with great confidence in Paul's boxing ability, William's a great journeyman, a very good boxer, but full confidence in Paul's abilities. Just, Paul, a few words from yourself, please. Just, uh, I'm happy to be part of such a big show, you know what I mean? Especially after my second fight. It's just, uh, Sam's done really well for us, and I wasn't really part of it, really, you know what I mean? Signing these guys just spurs me on, you know what I mean? Push them into the pro ranks and hopefully do well on Saturday night. Thanks, Paul. Next up, we've got another boxer having just his second contest from Glasgow via Kenya. Ahmed Ibri made a very good debut in October. Very strong points win, and he's having his second contest against a Scottish-based Giuseppe De Pato, um on Saturday night. So, if you say a few words, please, Ahmed. Yeah, just can't wait for Saturday night. You know, just got again from my second pro fight. Done well in my first one, so I just want to well, have a good show for my second one again. Can't wait. That's a hell of a local derby, that one. Yeah, the, 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 the name's about the second to but yeah, he's, he's, he's based just at Ellen Road and so two Scottish boxers in the ring together. Um, the next boxer we have on the table here is Thomas Dixon. He's on the comeback trail, having lost his first contest, won his first five, lost his last one on points, and he's looking to bounce back. A few words from you, Thomas? Yep, yeah, feeling good. Just what good to be as part of a, such a huge show. So it's like, go and use the platform, use it properly, get the performance. Also joining us on the top table is Dubliner John O'Carroll, former prize fighter champion, recently joined the MGM stable. This will be his third contest in quick succession in the MGM stable, boxing eight rounds against an opponent with a positive 9-3 record. So a good test for John, who's been doing the last bit of his training camp up here in Scotland. It's been a pleasure to have him here. So a few words from you, John. Yeah, I'm just delighted to be on a big bill, you know. Being on TV again, it just gives you that bit more incentive to impress, you know. But uh, since I've been with MGM, I've just, just, just rolling in the fights. I've 
doing my MGM now four months. I'm just gonna be my third fight, you know, so I'm keeping active, I'm sharp as I've ever been, probably fit as I've ever been. I trained like this was gonna be for the title, so I prepared for a 10 rounder. So an eight rounder is gonna be a good night to work for me, you know. I'll, uh, I'll be looking to impress come Saturday night. Thanks, John. Keeping the Irish team, we've got an excellent contest in the form of Dublin's Stephen Ormond against Zoltan Zabo. Zabo knocked out Stephen Ormond on our last Box Nation event on the 1st of October. So Stephen's bounced back with a win on the Box Nation broadcast event in Belfast and now he's looking to avenge that defeat. So that's a good international lightweight contest over eight rounds. Also on the bill and not present today, we have Ian Butcher, former British title challenger. In his last contest at Flyweight, he defeated reigning Commonwealth champion Thomas Asomba. He's now stepping up to Superfly for the first time. He will be in action against a Mexican who's based in Spain, a very able opponent, and that will be a six-round contest. We've also got Edinburgh's Tommy Philbin, who's 6-0. and He's taking a step up against Kelvin Young. Kelvin comes to the ring 18-7-2, so considerably more experienced. That's a good step up for Tommy. And finally, make up the bill, we've got Ross Murray from Glasgow, who's 3-0, scored a knockout win at the Hydro on his last outing, and he's looking to build on that against Sergei Tasimov down at Flyweight. And that makes up the undercard for... That is uh, an information bomb. Thank yeah. you very much, Sam. You're welcome. Uh, I'm just going to briefly just uh, say a few couple of words about Paul Butler uh, and Jack Cattrall, obviously Paul. Um, we, he's 22 and 1, former world champion, uh, RBF world champion. Um, it'll be 10 threes at uh, obviously at Bantamweight. Fighting another South American, um, he's becoming, you know, he's making a habit of, uh, of, of taking out these South Americans, and he's going to have to keep doing that because uh, obviously some of the guys that he's chasing after are from that are from that part of the world, um, and if he wants to get back on the you know on the world title scene, he's going to have to keep doing what he's doing. Um, but he's one or two fights away from that world title shot, um, back up to where he belongs, I believe. Um, you know, one of the most talented, naturally gifted fighters we've got in this in this country. Uh, and obviously he'll be looking to, uh, to impress on Saturday. Uh, Jack Cattrall um, will be you know, looking to continue his, his rise and his development. Um, as you might have seen the other day, we've just signed uh, Tyrone Nurse. Who's, um, you know, and that fight is, a, is one that I think we can make you know, in, a, in a few fights time. Um, so obviously Tyrone, keep, keep an eye on Jack and, and see how he deals with uh, a very, very tricky uh, contender from Argentina, 23 and one, with 10 knockouts, so can punch a bit. Very experienced, um, but a win for Jack will continue his rise up the world rankings. So good luck to both of those guys and good luck to all the guys on the card. But for the main event, uh, very, very delighted to see Billy back on a, a top table. Um, only two, about two days out from, from actually getting in the ring again. It's been a long year. Um, it's been a frustrating year for Bill. Um, and uh, he's obviously, you know, it, Considering who he had to beat to win a world title, the fact he's not made a defence yet makes it even more frustrating. Um, Bill's always stepped up when he's needed to, um, and he's always raised his game as, as the opponents have got tougher and tougher, and you know, no, none more so than on the night when he won the world title against Andy Lee. Um, that close to stopping him in the, uh, you know, very early on in the fight, and had he done that, I don't think people would be knocking Bill like they, like they sometimes do. I think he deserves this world title and, and he's going to have to, obviously, he's going to show us on Saturday that, you know, Artur Akovov, okay, fair, you know, appreciate him coming over and I appreciate the fact that he's going to step up and he's, uh, he's not coming over here to make up the numbers, but I think Bill's got the bit between his teeth um, and he's got to put on a, a good display on Saturday because there are some huge, huge fights for him next year. Um, and you know we're not we're not talking about going over old ground anymore. We're looking at going, you know, making moves going forward. And we are talking Golovkins, we are talking Canelo's, um, and they're the fights Billy wants. They're the skill set that Billy Joe Saunders his level is at, um, and and that, that is the, the, the you know the determination and, and the ambition that Billy's got will get him into a position where he is fighting one of those guys next year, early part of next year. But if he takes his eye off the ball this Saturday, then it will all be it will go up in smoke. So obviously he's got to, got to make make the most of the fact that he's, he can you know, put, he can put on a good display on Saturday and show everybody what they've been missing. Would have been on last weekend in Cardiff on a no disrespect to to the uh, Lagoon Centre, but would, would have been at a much much bigger show in Cardiff last weekend. But what Cardiff's 
lost is Paisley's game. So you will be seeing a, a world title fight on Saturday, featuring certainly one of the uh, top top world champions you know, that we have on the, certainly in the UK and, and beyond. I'd like to ask Mr. Akerwolf if you'd like to say a few words um, before we introduce Billy Joe Saunders. Yes. <coughs> My name is Arthur. Uh, Billy Joe Saunders is champion and uh, thank him uh, he gave me a chance. I came here for winning the title and after tomorrow uh, I will do my work. Let's go. My English is a little. Very good. Thank you Arthur. So to the WBO middleweight world champion Billy Joe Saunders. Right. First of all, I'd just like to thank uh, MGM uh, for sort of show up for me so late on. Um, my team, the Warrens. Um, look, no, I think above he's um, he, he is what he is. I'm not overlooking him, but you know I know where I belong and I belong at elite level. I've been on the phone to Frank and my management every other week, um, talking about the big fights. We were in talks with with Canelo, but he don't want no part of it as of yet. Um, so I've got a job to do Saturday night before I look at the big fights. I will take care of him in style, then uh, I'll be moving on to bigger and better things. Thank you very much, Bill. Um, I'm sure you'll all share the same feeling. It's great to see Billy back and uh, looking forward to obviously seeing him on Saturday night, plus all the other guys. I'd just like to open the floor to any questions, please. Final rush. <laughs> Billy Joe, how have you been gearing up in, in Glasgow for this fight? Yeah, it's good. I mean, I come to Glasgow when Kevin Mitchell boxed Ricky Burns. And I remember coming up here for the weekend. It was a good, good atmosphere <coughs> um, at the SCC, is it? SECC. And. Um, yeah. Thank you. And. Um, you know, the fight fans out there, it was good, it was a buzz of atmosphere that night. And I just look forward to coming back, and I've been back, I've been out in Spain there for six weeks, so it's nice to get back into the UK. And, uh, you know, I'm here fight week, I've been here since Saturday, and I'll be going home Sunday, so I'm, I'm loving it. And I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm an Arsenal fan, but I'm more of a Celtic fan as well, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, I didn't know what to say, but I've got a Celtic shirt with, with Sunders on the back, so I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? I see Any? your comments to you back on Twitter. I see his reply. What's your reply to that? Well, he, you know, he's, me and him, obviously, we don't like each other um, for whatever reason. But I've got no... I just put Did on there that it was a year, it was two years since then. I looked on my Facebook and it reminded me and I thought, God, oh, that's gone quick. So I just put it on Twitter. Then he decided to comment back and just got a silly little <coughs> argument. But like I say, you know, I've, I've beat him two years ago now. I've got nothing to prove to him. Um, like I say, he was offered uh, a seven-figure number to fight me and turn it down, let alone turning down £2 million off fighting for Golovkin. So he don't want to fight no champions, he just wants to fight people you know, who he knows he can um, handle. So yeah, so he's, he's put at the back of the pole. He's vacated his British title, um, so we're in different leagues at the minute. Fact and offer was sent to Team Bank only two weeks ago. No reply. So you make of that what you will. Billy, like I said, you know, Billy Joe's not interested in going over old, old ground, keep, keep, keep uh, worrying about what other people are doing, unless it's going to enhance his career. And uh, going to bash up Chris Eubank Jr. again, made, you know, he's already done it once. Mm. Convincingly. Well, I'm sure it's a fight, you know, it's what, it's the, fans, fight what again, the fans want to see, know. but, you know, I want to concentrate on America now and, and test myself to see how good I am. I'll beat everybody in the UK. Um, I proved myself from Southern Era to Commonwealth, British, European, world. So I just want to test my, my own self and my own mind, you know, because I don't want to be there when I'm retired thinking I should have had that chance, should have, would have. I want to test myself, see how good I am. Chuck me in the deep water, see if I can swim. Let's see.
Yeah, I mean, when I won the title in December last year, I mean, I didn't think that I would be up a year, but um, I, got, I had a show booked in for April, picked up a wrist injury, tried to rush it back. And to be honest with you, it's the worst thing I did because, you know, I tried to rush sparring back and it just made it worse. And that knocked me back for um, another two months, coming on three months. But I was told to rest it up and I wouldn't need operation, which I took the advice and thank God I didn't. But then I, we, we was in talks with um, Canelo's team to fight Canelo. I was supposed to fight um, an American, American journeyman, really, in Rosado. Um, I mean, that's all he is. I'm no disrespect to him, but he's, he's lost 10, 11 fights, whatever he's lost. And, uh, but the reward was I go over there and fight him on their show, but they give me the Canelo fight and they didn't want to do that. They just wanted me to go over there and for a chance of the airman winning the world title, so they give it to Canelo. But obviously that didn't, didn't happen. So, you know, we are where we are. We're a year down the road. You know, I'm just thankful I'm out now, first defence, and um, hopefully 2017 will be a lot, lot more busier for me. Well, I know it will. See you in the end of 2017. Personal preference. If you had the choice, Canelo or Golovkin would be your number one. Well, listen. My opinion is that I beat Canelo comfortable. Golovkin is is the best on the planet. Um, I've always said. I said two years ago that I would like time for him, and I've said 18 months. It's been two years. That's not for experience, because you know what more experience than want. I was in Olympic Games at 18. Um, I've won every title you can. Um, I've achieved everything. If I wanted to give up boxing tomorrow, I'd be a happy man. So let's test myself. I want Golovkin, and he keeps on about he wants my belt. I want his belts. So let's get it on. But like I said, no disrespect to uh, Marf Akhavov. Not overlooking him. Um, I've got a job to do uh, Saturday. That's his big, big chance. Obviously, if he wins, then he's in the big box, and it's, he's living the dream, isn't he? So I can't overlook him. Tyson Fury is probably about 10 minutes away. He, he's, uh, he, he's on his way up. He was supposed to come up the other day, but um, I don't know what happened. He had some sort of puncher again or something. <laughs> but yeah, he's on his way up. He's actually, he's actually, he should be here now. So he's coming up and I'll, he'll be walking the belt up. Tyson Fury. Put his Batman outfit on outside. <laughs> Oil well done, ladies and gents. Uh, if you can't make it down to uh, the Lagoon Centre on Saturday, we are live and exclusive on Box Nation. Uh, but looking forward to seeing you all there. And the, uh, thank you very much for coming. Cheers.